Small Cell Forum and 5G Americas welcome you to this overview of our recent white paper on precision planning for 5G era networks for small cells, which highlights some applications of machine learning. My name is Julius Robson and I'm the Chief Strategy Officer. This work has been led by key contributors AT&T, Nokia, Kima and IB Wave. This paper looks into how we plan networks that are identified with small cells. Our market research shows that the level of densification over the next five years is something like two to five times increase in the number of small cells per urban macro. But there are challenges. Our deployer survey shows that small cell siting, costs and return on investment are key concerns for deployers going forward. So let's have a look at the problem in general. This is a plot of Manhattan and on it we can see the coverage achieved by the existing macro network. And if we look closely, we can see little red yellow dots which indicate the presence of small cells. But the choosing of these locations for small cells requires a, a network planning process. In that process, we must consider a variety of information sets such as the terrain and cluster, which means buildings, as well as the potential locations for sites um, and existing existing infrastructure and backhaul. And these all must be uh, reduced and prioritised to produce a subset of those sites which give an optimal um, coverage, dominance, cost and serving the traffic demands expected in future. It's a complicated problem and it's not just a two-dimensional problem, we must consider the vertical elevation too, and particularly when, when considering in-building factors. So all this subject is described in our petition planning paper um, and overall we find that although it is a complicated process there are advances in artificial intelligence and in particular machine learning which can be applied uh, to make sure it remains viable and this paper provides two examples which I'll go into now. This is the contents of a paper which can be downloaded from our website www.scf.io. It starts with a description of the challenge for network planning um, and the placement of small cells next to demand hotspots. And it then looks at the state of the art for planning processes, considering both indoor and out outdoor methods. We then look at two examples, which I'm going to go into next in this presentation. Um, the first one is how sighting accuracy can be improved with machine learning algorithms. And the second example, described in chapter five, looks at how small cells can be placed um, automatically using a machine learning process. To summarise the challenge for small cells, it's all about trying to get your small cell as close as possible to the centre of demand, which is not already served by the existing network. On the left, we see an example where the small cell site is very close to, the, to that centre of demand, and therefore the demand is well served by the serving area of the small cell. This would represent a good return on investment for a mobile operator, as its capacity is well utilised. The cell on the right is close to the demand hotspot, but not close enough. And so its demand would not be well served. And this would represent a low utilization and a lower return on investment for the deployer. We can look at a graph of the return on investment on the right hand side, uh, according to the distance that the small cell is away from its demand hotspot centroid. What we can see is that the return on investment gradually reduces with distance. And so we recommend that the small cell should be located within 20 to 40 metres of the centroid. The first step in planning a small cell network is to understand how well the existing network is serving demand. And this can be done using geolocated measurements of network quality. However, it's important that the locates associated with these quality reports are accurate enough to be used for small cell planning purposes. This is a map of the location accuracy that can be achieved in a typical US city, we see a red area in the middle of the picture, which indicates that the only less than half of the measurements made in that pixel have an accuracy of the required 40 meters needed for small cell planning. So this is using a basic algorithm to estimate the location. And here we can see the benefit of applying machine learning to estimate the location which does a much better job of creating an accurate estimate of, of where that quality report was made. And the centre of a picture now shows mostly green areas, which indicates that over 50 and perhaps 85% of measurements made meets that 40 metre accuracy requirement. Here's a bit more detail on, on that from the white paper. Now the quality port has an actual location shown at the green circle in the middle. There are estimates of that location coming back from the network, which range along a line. 
Now, if we simply average those location estimates, we arrive at a typical error shown by the green line on the graph on the right. And it has a, a median error of around 60 meters. By combining those location estimates with a machine learning approach, we can do a much better job and produce an, an error, uh, a median error of only 18 meters. So it's much better and suitable for small cell planning. The second application of machine learning in small cell planning looks at automated cell planning. And this is trying to pick a set of sites which optimizes the network experience for users and maximizes the return on investment for the mobile operator. There are many factors which must be taken into account when trying to pick a set of sites to deliver the best performance and, and, and return on investment. And you can read more about this in the paper. Um, summarizing here though, we, we can see that there's some uh, information about the terrain and the environment, as well as a list of the, the candidate sites that that uh, deployer might have. So there may be some assets they already own, there may be some that it can have access to, but of course you must consider the uh, transport, the backhaul for those, and uh, a range of other factors. And these long list of site, candidate sites must be reduced and prioritised down to maximise a number of different objectives in the optimization. So these would obviously include coverage, and also a, a metric called dominant, dominance, which I'll talk about more in a minute, as well as cost and the locations of traffic. So it's a complicated process. Here's the results of our network designs. One on the left is a manual design, which achieves the objectives with 185 sites. And on the right hand side, we can see an automated machine learning based design, which achieved the objectives using 111 sites. This is a 40% reduction in sites, which is, would represent a significant saving. But let's look in a bit more detail about how well these two networks performed. Coverage is an important metric, and in this case, we were managed to reduce number of sites with only the smallest of impacts on coverage, both achieving 98% or so uh, coverage of RSRP greater than NEG 112 dBm. Dominance is a slightly more complicated metric, and this is all about making sure you have one strong signal and not too many others. And so a dom site with dominance has a stronger signal is 5 dB higher than the third strongest. In fact, here, the, the automated design achieves around 95% area dominance, whereas the manual design with more sites has a lower, only 83% dominance. So a significant improvement in dominance there, and probably due to the fact that you're using fewer sites. To summarise, whilst we see that mobile network design is going to become more complicated and require to be more precise in the 5G era with small cells, so too our planning process is becoming more precise and sophisticated. This paper looks into the state of the art of small cell planning and shares two case studies on how machine learning is being used. One shows how sites can't be reduced with automated cell planning, and a second shows that how the arts, each site's ROI can be increased by using more precise location. If you'd like to find out more, please do download our paper from our website as shown. And if you want to get in touch and find out more, contact us at info at smallcellforum.org. This precision planning work is one of a number of activities we have going on in the forum right now. If you're interested in any of the items on this list, please do get in touch. I thank you for your time today.